Welcome to section four. Today we're going to branch out a little bit and we're going to learn about three specific ty types of quadrilaterals. We're going to learn about rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. So these fall under the parallelogram family. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about their properties and then we're going to apply those properties. So first we need to review what are all those properties that parallelograms have. Right now I would like you to pause the video and write down all six. Okay, at this point in time, you should have all six properties of parallelograms written down. Now, I already mentioned earlier in the video that rhombuses, rectangles, and parallelogram fit under the parallelogram family. Um, so the first property of a rhombus is that it has all of the properties of a parallelogram. And in fact, this is also true of a rectangle and a square. A rhombus has three other important properties. Um, so property number two is going to be that a rhombus has four congruent sides. So, you have seen rhombuses before. So, a rhombus has four congruent sides and has all those properties of parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel, the diagonals bisect each other, uh, the opposite angles are congruent, etc. Um, it ha also has four congruent sides, though. The diagonals are perpendicular. And then the last one is that the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So for example, this, di this angle is bisected, this angle is bisected, this angle is bisected, and this angle is bisected. So those three properties make this quadrilateral more specific than a parallelogram. So it's a parallelogram, but it has some additional properties which make it a rhombus. A rectangle, you guys have definitely heard this one before. Again, it's still a parallelogram, so it has all the properties of a parallelogram. Uh, it also has four congruent angles, and the diagonals are congruent. For the Four congruent angles, all of them are 90 degrees. So a rectangle has four right angles, the diagonals are congruent, and then it's still a parallelogram. So the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite sides are parallel, the opposite angles are congruent, etc. All those properties. Um, one thing I would like to clarify is a rectangle is not a rhombus. A rectangle and a rhombus are two completely different uh, figures. They're both parallelograms, but they're not the same beyond that. Um, a square still has all the properties of parallelogram. And then this one is really important. A square is both a rhombus and a rectangle. So a square has all the properties of a rhombus and all the properties of a rectangle. Um, so it has four congruent sides, like a rhombus. It has four right angles, like a rectangle. The diagonals are perpendicular, like a rhombus. They're congruent, like a rectangle. So all the properties of a rhombus and a rectangle, a square contains. And it has all the properties of a parallelogram. So it's a very special, very specific type of figure. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying these properties now. So if you look at example number one, it says, for rhombus QRST, decide whether the statement is always, sometimes, or never true. 
Now, the way I like to start these problems is to draw a figure. So I'm going to draw myself a rhombus. It has four congruent sides. That makes it a rhombus. I'm going to label it. You have to go in order. So it doesn't matter where you put Q, but the other vertices need to go in order from there. So we have Q, R, S, T. So the first statement is angle Q is congruent to angle S. Okay, is it true that opposite angles are congruent in a rhombus? Well, this is a property of parallelograms, and a rhombus is a parallelogram, so this is always true. I'm not, and I'm going to put it's always true because it's a property of parallelograms. Sorry, I kind of ran out of room there. Okay, the next one is angle Q congruent to angle R. Always, sometimes, or never. Okay, well in this case, these are consecutive angles. Um, so we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. That's a property of parallelograms. But we don't know that they're congruent. Now, it is possible, so this is a sometimes, the case when they are both congruent is when they are both 90 degrees. And in this case, if we have four congruent sides and four right angles, this becomes a square. So when our rhombus is a square, um, then the consecutive angles will be right and will be congruent. Um, so I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to be working with these properties a lot, so we can discuss them more when you come to class. Example number two says a quadrilateral has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. Classify this quadrilateral. So this is what we're looking at. Four congruent sides. So it could be a rhombus. Or it is a rhombus. And then four congruent angles. Okay, so the four congruent sides make it a rhombus. Four congruent angles, so they're all 90 degrees, makes it a rectangle. So this figure is both a rhombus and a rectangle which makes it a square. So that's something that's really important. Uh, the square is kind of like the, the child of rhombus and rectangle. So if rhombus and rectangle came together and had a kid, it would be the square. So that's why the square has all the properties of the rhombus and the rectangle. Um, moving up to where we wrote all these properties, I don't know how much room you have. But here's a little bit of what, this is kind of what the uh, family tree looks like. So you have parallelogram. Parallelogram is like a distant ancestor. You know, the, the big overall umbrella. And then from the parallelogram, we have the rhombus. And we have the rectangle. And then when those two have a child... It's called a square. So I know this is a little bit of a backwards family tree, but that's a little bit about what it looks like. The square is both the rhombus and the rectangle. So that's why in example number two, we would classify this as a square. I know, again, that this is confusing, and I may not be wording it the best, but we will talk about it when you get to class. We do have one more page of examples of applying this properties, so let's move on. Okay, so it says, name all quadrilaterals for which the following statements are true. And I'm telling you that your options are parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, and square. The first one is, the diagonals are congruent. Okay, so the first place that we see that is a rectangle. That's not a basic property of parallelograms. It's not a property of a rhombus. It is a property of a rectangle. Now, I have to remember that a square is a rectangle. So a square will also contain this property. Okay, contains no acute angles. I would like you to do this one on your own, please. Good luck. So if the figure contains no acute angles, 
means it has no angles that are under 90 degrees. So it can contain all obtuse angles, which wouldn't really make sense. We can't have four angles that are over 100 or over 90 degrees. So really what this is saying is it's saying there's four 90 degree angles, four right angles. Again, this is a rectangle, and because it's a rectangle, it's also a property of a square. Okay, um, next we're moving on to example four. It says, consider the rhombus shown. Calculate the following, and then it gives us four things to find. Because this is a rhombus, I'm going to mark that all four sides are congruent, just so that we remember. The first thing that we are asked to find is the measure of angle QPR, this one right here. Well, if you remember, opposite angles are bisected. So that angle, QPR, is going to be congruent to TPS. So therefore, QPR is going to be 30 degrees. We are also asked to find the measure of angle QTP. QTP. Well, remember that in a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. So all four of these are going to be right angles. So QTP is going to be 90 degrees. Next, we are asked to find RP. I know that RT is 6. And I also know that because a rhombus is a parallelogram, that the diagonals are bisected. So RT is going to be congruent to TP. TP then is also 6. So RP is going to be 12. And then the last thing that we have to find is QT. Now if I knew TS, that would be really helpful, because TS and, and QT are congruent but I don't. Right now, this is what I'm looking at. So I have Q, T, P. I'm looking for Q, T. I have this 30 degree angle. I have six and I have a 90 degree angle. Now, this should look like something that we've done before. This triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I'm gonna have to use 30, 60, 90. Under that is gonna go L, L root three and two L. I know the side across from 60 is 6, so under 60 I'm going to write 6. Now I have L root 3 equals 6, so L is equal to 6 over root 3. So under the L is 6 over root 3, under the 2L is 2 over root 3. Now the X, the QT, is across from the 30, so QT is 6 over root 3. So that's a little bit of a throwback. In class, there's going to be more throwbacks to the Pythagorean Theorem, 30-60-90 triangles, 45-45-90 triangles, uh, trig. So you're going to have to remember all that from last chapter. So that was an example with a rhombus. Um, we have one more example that we're going to do with a square. What I would like you to do is pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Please try all four problems. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. It says consider the square shown. So I'm going to mark a few things so that I know that it's a square. Square has four congruent sides and four right angles. There's a whole bunch of other properties, but I'm just going to start with these. The first thing that we are asked to find is GHF. GHF. Okay, now remember that a square has all the properties of a rhombus. In a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. So in a square, they're also going to be perpendicular. So GHF is going to be 90 degrees. Next we're asked for DGH. DGH. This angle right here. Now a square is still a rhombus, so the diagonals are bisected. Or the, the angles are bisected by the diagonals. So I know that angle G in total is 90 degrees, and it's bisected, so each part is going to be 45 degrees. Next, I'm asked to find HF. 
I know that in a, in a parallelogram, the diagonals are bisected. So those are going to be congruent. They're going to be 5 and 5. And then because a square is a rectangle, both diagonals are going to be congruent. So that means all the parts are 5. So HF is also going to be 5. And then we are asked to find DE. So I'm asked to find this right here. Well, I know that all my parts are 5. So I'm looking at this little triangle up here. The two sides are 5. It's a right triangle. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I should notice that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If not, you can do Pythagorean theorem. Either way, you should get DE to be 5 root 2. That's not the only way to approach the problem, but that's one way that works. Um, if you didn't do it that way, that's fine. If you did it another way, you might have gotten 10 over root 2, which is the same thing. Um, that's using a different method. So again, I know there's a lot of properties with this section, and we're going to be learning some more next section. Um, so br please bring any questions that you have to class tomorrow. When you come to class, we're going to be talking about these properties and a little bit of, of the parallelogram family tree, and then we're going to be applying these properties. Please bring questions you have to class. Thank you.